<clears throat> G'day guys, Rigra here. Hope everybody is doing great today. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the Trunksy X1 great. And um, just a little list all the mods that I did to it and who made it. And I'm going to post the link in the description. So you might want to go there after the video. And also, don't forget to subscribe. First off, is the case that's the most noticeable part of this. Uh, this build here and it was made by adverse effect lots of adverse effect parts on it because I mean he is he's one of the guy that down in Australia that kind of messed a lot with this little machine very inexpensive machine but once it's probably probably uh, set up it does a great prints so this is adverse effect the uh, axis is external this side here as you can tell and that's also adverse effect as well as the bed here it's all one big upgrade which you can use and uh, then what you need to do is swap over two of the wires inside the stepper otherwise it's gonna go the wrong way it's gonna go away from your limit switch when you home it this little hand stop where you do the homing yeah the little part the white part here is another one that I made I made this thing and it fits perfectly there this is kind of like the adverse effect one this uh stepper mount but i made it stronger because the other one was starting flex i think that's because i need to tighten my strap more because they're so much they're, they're just very cheap strap and they are they're not as flexible so they need more tension to cut on the uh, backlash so yep and X axis same thing this is adverse effect as well the cooler here is a CR10 cooler made by iDig 3D it's a CR10 cooler works fine I made this little thing here so that it would hit the limit switch for the homing the Z axis was fixed up with this kit by uh, Alberto Fioco it's a Z axis uh, wobble or fix I don't recall the name exactly but it's gonna be in the description so it is this purple part here that's replaced the original and the spacing of the holes is, is much better than the original and what I'm printing right now is this part here because when I first printed it I had a lot of a uh, wobble in my uh, my wire bar here my bar wire axis was very sloppy on the on the, uh, the Z frame here so that's uh, that's why it it looks so bad and kind of uh, messed up because I had to weld it with soldering iron so I kind of uh, melted back up but it's been doing fine ever since so that's all right. that was alright I had a little bit of a problem with the z-axis being tilted this way so I made a hole and I put a very stout angle iron there and if I tighten it up it pushes on it and it puts it back where it should be I uh, adjusted it with a big 12 inch square and it's totally fine I had a blower fan here very cheap fits perfectly in the CR10 cooler and also replaced the original fan because it was way too noisy for my taste so I swapped that out and the, bed, the plate here is just a mirror I had that mirror cut and I had a glass place I use I reuse the, the base plate of the trunk see this is your original bed plate I drill another hole so it would fit the square pattern of the adverse effect and um, then I glued I glued some uh, magnet both on the acrylic part here acrylic part here as well as on the glass and it's been working so well I got no problem with adhesion and all I do is just use a glue stick on it. Sometimes I have a problem getting the parts off. A big part like this, and I have to soak the thing in the water, just so it dilutes the glue, and I can finally pull it out. It uh, it it sticks very well. And on top here, since I replaced this and I, I made one that had no extruder mount, I said, well, might as well cut down on the weight on the Z axis. So I printed this thing by, if I recall, let me see, Cavern 2, Cavern 2 on the Thingiverse, made this little mount, I only enlarged the hole in the center because it wouldn't fit perfectly, but yeah, put it there, allowed me to remove at least 3 inches of the Bowden tube, so I could 
cut down on retraction. So anyways that's my little Tronxy and it's working just, just great now. So this was my first printer. It was pretty cheap and I knew I was gonna have issues with it and I kinda wanted that because that's how you learn. You learn to fix things and find problems. Every time you look at your parts and you see something's weird with it, you gotta figure it out. And most of the problems they usually come down to the mechanical portions of the machine. Either it's misaligned, there's misaligned or it's it's got slack somewhere. So now that I learned what I needed to learn with this one, I can go with a bigger one, a more complex machine that will do ABS and it will have a bigger bed. Because right now the bed is limiting me and I would really like to print ABS because lots of stuff I would like to print for cars, uh, they need to be in ABS in order to survive the heat. So that will be what I will be looking for eventually. I got a few machines in mind, but none of are, none are perfect for uh, for what I want, and mostly the size, the one that is perfect in specs, is the one that does not offer a big enough plate. So I will keep you posted, and in the meantime, you might want to drop a like or drop a comment in in below, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.